Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror film, Tears of Kali. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In India, the year of 1980s, reports of cults experimenting on their followers became rampant. One of these cults is known as Taylor Erickson Group, or TEG for short. They help followers exercise the dark part of their souls. The story of the cult starts in Pune, India, where an old man watches over his followers. The followers are in a state of meditation to exercise their dark part. Some followers scream out in agony, while others vomit during their meditation. After a while, the old man notices a naked lady standing out as she meditates. He then approaches her and asks her what she is seeing in her mind. She replies that she is looking inwards and can only see darkness, and she will embrace it. The old man gets worried as she doesn't purge out the darkness. He then brings her up and tells her to no longer look inward, but instead look outward to witness the world. However, the lady is afraid of the outside world's light, and she prefers darkness. The old man then leaves her, but he still encourages her to try looking out. Just then, the lady takes the old man's word seriously and finds an extreme way to see the world. She picks up scissors, and the others watch in horror as she cuts off her eyelids. Right after that, it comes with the first chapter of the story, labeled Shakti. It begins by showing the horrific incidents of TEG experiments. We see the journalist researching cults and the entity Shakti, believed to be the darkness inside every person. Shakti is also believed to be related to the case of a murderer named Lisa, who killed her lover, Samarfan, who is in the cult with her. After finding her lead, the journalist goes to the mental asylum to interview Lisa. At the asylum, she asks the manager to give her permission to interview Lisa. The manager allows her to interview after learning gruesome new info on the murder case. The journalist then gets guided to a painting room. As soon as they enter, one of the patients freaks out over the red paint and her imaginary red girl. The staff silence and take the patient away. While they are taking care of the freaking out patient, the guide introduces the journalist to Lisa, and they begin the interview. First, she asks Lisa about the events that unfolded in the cult from her perspective. Lisa admits to killing Samarfan, and she was in a delusion because she called herself Shakti at the time. But the journalist thinks Lisa's dark part named Shakti is fake, and she is instead suffering from a mental disorder. Lisa tells her that when the cult is healing her, they are trying to remove Shakti, or the dark part from her, and Lisa does not want to. However, the risks are too dangerous. She also adds that this method was from the TEG cult, introduced by Samarfan. The journalist then asks what Lisa knows about the TEG cult, but even she doesn't know since it's very secretive. Lisa only knows that their therapies usually involve hypnosis, and TEG followers tend to die during therapy. The journalist asks for more details before the murder. Lisa explains that she got attracted to another guru named Kioma, who had a conflict with Samarfan at the time. As soon as Kioma is mentioned, the journalist hypothesized a story, where Lisa's murder case is about Kioma killing Samarfan over a complicated hormone story. However, the evidences are weak, so she confronts Lisa about the new info that they find on the murder scene. She shows Lisa a picture of Samarfan's body butchered at the crime scene. She demandingly asks Lisa what killed Samarfan. Lisa starts shaking as she wants to forget the past, but the journalist keeps pounding her for answers. After heated demands, Lisa finally agrees to tell her the story. She says that Samarfan taught the cult the method he learned from TEG. This method was based on monks that could call Shakti out from the darkness. After that therapy, everyone was healing. However, Kioma couldn't heal, as the method didn't work for him. This leads to Kioma killing Samarfan, since he thought that he was fooled by him. Just then, the journalist snaps as Lisa's story doesn't make sense. She also reveals that Kioma doesn't exist, and it's just her mental disorder, making it up to protect herself from the past. The journalist then forces Lisa to recall Shakti and another dark entity, which is revealed to be a beast that can tear people apart. Meanwhile, the hospital staff hears the freaked out patient again. The patient then tells him that she feels the red girl coming again. The staff rush to Lisa, as he suspects that Lisa has something to do with this. Back to the journalist and Lisa, after Lisa recalls the real memories of her past, she starts scratching herself, as blisters and rashes physically appear all over her body. She starts becoming red, and soon the journalist keeps demanding the truth as she pins Lisa down. The journalist reveals that Samarfan is her brother. Apparently, she's here to find out how her brother died, and she does not believe the lies from Lisa. Shortly after, Lisa's guilt takes over her, and she admits that Samarfan taught the cult how to manifest entities from the dark world. Just then, the room starts getting dark. The journalist senses a presence around her, but she can't see it. 
Soon after, the staff sees Lisa and the journalist on the ground. He pushes the journalist away and tells her to leave. Then he tells Lisa that her secret is safe as the journalist did not get any evidence. However, as the journalist exits the room with her bag, it's revealed that she was recording the whole interview as evidence. She then sees that Lisa's method from the cult is real, as she manifests her dark side as shadows. She plans to use these as evidence, but the staff of the asylum tries to stop her, since they're revealed to be also part of the TEG cult. However, they fail as the journalist successfully reaches the elevator. Just then, as the journalist is in the elevator, the dark entity shows up behind the journalist. It then lunges at her and starts tipping her apart. This possibly explains that Samarfin was actually killed by the dark entity, hidden inside Lisa's body. However, because of her guilt over her lover's death, Lisa finally commits suicide by stabbing herself in the neck, causing the entity to stop and disappear. The staff tries to stop Lisa, but it's too late. Lisa dies along with the dark entity. However, it's also too late, as the journalist has encountered and died from what the other patient called the Red Girl. The staff then gets frustrated that their experiment with the Shakti is destroyed when Lisa, being the only succeeding sample, dies from her guilt. The next chapter then shows another experiment of TEG. Mr. Baldy is a thug with violent behavior and drug addiction. He is on parole from prison to take therapeutic care so that he can soon bail from prison. Mr. Baldy arrives at the house of a psychiatrist. Shortly after arriving, Mr. Baldy attempts to sexually harass one of the psychiatrist's patients. Fortunately, the psychiatrist calls Mr. Baldy out, stopping his hormones. Moments after, the consultation begins. Mr. Baldy explains that he needs therapy to fix his violent ways and drug abuse. He also tells the psychiatrist that he wants to get out of his current situation. The psychiatrist at first doesn't accept being his doctor, but Mr. Baldy threatens him to do it. However, the psychiatrist doesn't flinch and instead asks the asylum staff to take care of Mr. Baldy. But due to the recent events of Lisa's death and the vanishing of the journalist, the staff couldn't help. The psychiatrist accepts Mr. Baldy's commission and asks him to lay by the bed in his office. After that, he asks Mr. Baldy to tell his story. After a while, Mr. Baldy notices that the psychiatrist isn't taking the therapy seriously. Mr. Baldy tries to attack the psychiatrist, but the psychiatrist grabs his arm and pins him down on the bed. As they wrestle in the bed, he tells Mr. Baldy that he has found the good treatment method. After that, the psychiatrist manages to force Mr. Baldy to sleep. Later that night, Mr. Baldy wakes up to see the psychiatrist's place covered in plastic. He gets weirded out and tries to escape, but the psychiatrist catches him and tells him that resisting the method is futile. Mr. Baldy then acts as if he'll go with the treatment. However, as soon as the psychiatrist turns his back to prepare for the treatment, Mr. Baldy attempts to knock him unconscious with a statue. But the psychiatrist, being an expert on reading people, predicts Mr. Baldy, wrestles with him and manages to paralyze him. Then they go back to the office. The psychiatrist reveals that Mr. Baldy will be going through the hypnotic programming method from the TEG, where he presses different nerves on Mr. Baldy's body. This leads to Mr. Baldy being controlled by the psychiatrist, using his voice. Mr. Baldy then gets desperate and begs for the treatment to stop. However, the psychiatrist continues with his treatment. He explains to Mr. Baldy that one of the founders of TEG is a master in hypnosis who invented the method. In therapy, the first sentence blurted out by a patient will help the hypnosis therapy. Mr. Baldy recalls that his first sentence is to get out of his skin. Soon after, the psychiatrist gets naked for enlightenment and sits on a chair as he commences Mr. Baldy's treatment. Mr. Baldy resists skinning himself, but eventually fails as he grabs the cutter the psychiatrist gave him. He then starts cutting off his flesh and peeling it off as he gets the treatment. Mr. Baldy dies and the psychiatrist rejoices for the successful treatment as Mr. Baldy removes the skin off his face. The treatment ends as Mr. Baldy fully gets out of his skin. The third and last chapter features TEG Most Paranormal Event. This starts in Edgar's house. He is a spiritual healer and he is shown to have great skills in healing people in his group therapy sessions. There he removes people from their burdens through his touch. After proving his skills as he heals a person's lungs, the people around him believe and they show up regularly at his sessions. However, he shows that even if he has proof, his fame is becoming a joke as most people see him as a quack doctor. His lover comforts him and tells him that it'll all work out. Soon after, the next session begins. A woman named Mara tells Edgar that she is afflicted with a sickness that she can't get rid of with medicine or physical therapy. Edgar proceeds to heal her by touching her. However, it seems that the sickness Mara has is something strong and sinister. He feels like it's a spirit, and suddenly, Mara calls him daddy. 
Edgar ignores that and manages to force out the sickness in Mera, and Mera is overjoyed that the sickness is gone. After the session, he asks Mera where she got the sickness from. She replies that she got it from TEG. Edgar finds the group familiar and wonders how she got it from there. She then reveals that the old man from before is an expert at healing through hypnosis. She theorizes that people have darkness in their souls that need to be let out. The healing expert calls it the Kali process, and once the darkness is exercised or let out, it needs to be controlled not to cause trouble. After their discussion, Mera and Edgar prepare to sleep for the night. However, the sickness that was pulled out of Mera is a dark entity from her soul and now starts creeping into Edgar's villa. Meanwhile, Edgar's lover is fixing the things under the basement when she suddenly feels the entity behind her. The entity slashes her foot, making her unable to run. She screams for help, and this alerts both Mera and Edgar, so they run to the basement. However, it's too late as the entity pins her down and proceeds to break her neck, causing her to have a seizure ensuring her death. As Edgar and Mera arrive, Edgar mourns his lover's death, but the entity doesn't let up as it chases both of them next. They get cornered in a storage room in the basement, and Mera freaks out as she thinks the entity doesn't want to let her go. Fortunately, Edgar manages to calm her down, and soon after the entity leaves them for now. Edgar then asks her what the Kali process is, so that he might find a way to fight the entity. She then reveals that the process that the healing expert did in the past experimented on the human soul so that they could see the process different results. The incidents prove one soul can manifest the Shakti entity. It also proves that souls can be programmed or hacked through hypnosis. The last experiment proves that entities not from this world can be manifested through the follower's dark side of their souls. Mera was one of the followers who were part of the experiment to manifest entities that are not of this world, but due to her fear, she left the experiment. Later on she hears the news that most of the healing experts' test subjects in that experiment are dead. After hearing that, Edgar makes a plan to escape. He makes himself bait to let Mira run away. But to his surprise, Mira doesn't run and wants to meet the entity instead. He then realizes that when he cured Mira of her sickness, it made Mira healthy, but also freed the entity inside her soul. And now, Mira wants to take the entity back as its host. Edgar realizes that the entity wanted to escape from Mera to look for a new host since she was sick from her terminal disease, and Edgar's lover got killed since the entity was hungry. Suddenly, Mera forces Edgar to open the door, but they get into a fight. She reveals that she is obsessed with the power the entity has, and she wants to keep it. Mera then tries to kill Edgar, but she trips into the door and impales herself with a piece of wood. After that, Edgar faints and wakes up the next day. He wakes up to see the aftermath of the incident and goes out to exit the basement. He encounters the entity following him. Fortunately, he doesn't get caught and locks the basement. Just then, Edgar encounters a random visitor, but he doesn't want to entertain him and warns him not to enter the basement. He then proceeds to leave the house. He wants to live a new life away from healing people. However, as he leaves, the visitor hears the voice of the entity from the basement. And soon, he goes in and apparently becomes its new host. The following moment, we see the same healing expert giving the monologue about the capabilities and dangers humans can bring forth through their souls. Meanwhile, the naked lady from the beginning of the film is wandering about the world in a trance, manifesting her soul to accept the world's light through her bloody tears of joy, the tears of the Kali process. He ominously says that he'll keep doing such experiments to know the answers. The film ends as he asks the audience if they have ever looked deep into their souls. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.